In this session, I'll focus on the future scar. You are very welcome to Nest Connect Institute. Please ensure that you subscribe after going through this great video. The fetal skull being a bony structure protects the delicate brain um, components of uh, the fetus. It is the largest part of the fetus in proportion to its body, meaning it's larger than any part of the fetus uh, as we can put this on a uh, leveled consideration. Now, adaptations have to occur between the fetal skull and the maternal pelvis during labor. If there's any disproportion between the two structures, then we will see labor that won't progress. It's also very important to take note that the fetal skull is formed up of three basic components, the face, the vault, and the base. The face, the vault, and the base. Let's begin with the vault. So this is the upper dome shaped um, part, which of course is uh, as seen in this picture, uh, which we can see directly superiorly. So that is the vault. And the vault is composed up of the following bones, one occipital bone, two parietal bones, two frontal bones. Now the occipital bone is the one that is found at the back of the head or the, the skull itself. The two parietal bones are the bones that are found on the sides of uh, the fetal skull. And the two frontal bones are found anteriorly in relation to the fetal skull. So the vault contains one occipital bone, two parietal bones, two frontal bones. Now, it's important to take note that the frontal bones, they will fuse into one at the age of eight years. So before that, they are separate, but at the age of eight, they will be fused into being one single bone. The bones of the vault are not fused area enough whilst in utero because this facilitates the process of molding. Molding is basically the overriding of um, the bones themselves, especially the parietal bones, the bones that are found on the sides of the fetal skull. The other components of the fetal skull, apart from the vault, is the base and the face. Now, the bones of the base are heavy and firmly fused, and this is to protect the vital centers in the medulla. The face itself is composed up of 14 smaller bones that are firmly fused together. And these are not compressible. They are not subjected to the process of molding. Let's consider sutures on the fetal skull. In simpler terms, sutures are just joints on the fetal skull. And therefore, sutures are cranial joints formed where two or more bones would meet. In this picture that you're able to focus on, we'll have a good number of sutures. We have the coronal suture, we have the sagittal suture, we have um, the lambdoidal uh, suture, and so on, and the frontal suture included. So sutures are just cranial joints which are formed where two or more bones are meeting. Now, let's consider these sutures one by one. We'll start with the frontal, which is also known as the metopic suture. So this is a suture that will be found between two frontal bones, those bones which we said they are being fused at the age of eight. Secondly, we have the sagittal suture. This is between two parietal bones. The parietal bones are the bones that we are finding on the sides of the skull. We have the coronal suture, which lies between the parietal and the frontal bones. We have the lambdoidal suture, which is a suture found between the parietal and the occipital bones. And we have the temporal suture, which is between the inferior margin of the parietal and the temporal bones. Now, fontanelles are different from sutures. A fontanelle is a membranous space that is created by joining of two or more sutures. And in this regard, the fetal skull will only have two fontanelles. We have the anterior fontanelle and the posterior fontanelle. The anterior fontanelle is also known as the bregma. It is diamond shaped, okay, and it is um, found at the front or anteriorly 
to the fetal skull or the baby's head. Then the posterior fontanel, which is the lambda, it is a triangular shaped space found toward the back of the fetal skull between the sagittal and the lambdoidal sutures. One thing that is interesting for us to take note is that the anterior fontanel, which is the bregma, will fuse up. It will fuse up at the age of one year and um, uh, six uh, months, at 18 months, one year, six months. Then the posterior fontanel will fuse up at the age of just six weeks, which is one month and two weeks. So that is important to take note. This is what was being described, the anterior fontanel and the posterior fontanel. The anterior fontanel is also known as the brigma and the, the posterior fontanel is also known as the lambdoido, uh, uh, a, a, the posterior fontanel also known as um, the lambda. Now, looking at uh, this structure, we'll notice that the description as given, the anterior fontanel is diamond shaped, then uh, the posterior fontanel is triangular shaped, very important. Let's go to the regions and landmarks on the fetal skull. Now, these are so critical because they play particular importance in obstetric care. They also form the presenting part of the fetus or the part of the fetus that will be noticed as the leading part as uh, the baby is being born through the birth canal. So these regions and landmarks in the fetal skull would include the first, the vertex. This is the area between the anterior fontanel uh, the two parietal eminences and the posterior fontanel. The parietal eminences are the raised points on the parietal bones, okay? And these are the same points where ossification uh, begins, or they are also known as ossification centers. Then secondly, we have the same spot on the bra. This extends from the anterior fontanel to the orbital ridges. Then apart from this, we have other landmarks such as the glabella, which is the area between the eyebrows as um, can be noticed, I think in another picture that will be shown soon. The face extends from the orbital ridges to the junction of the chin and the neck. The, the other landmark that is very important is the osput, which is the area between the base of the skull and the posterior fontanel. And it's very important to also take note that another important landmark is this uh, occipital region. This is the area between the osput um, and it's called the sub-occipital region. Now, on the diameters the aspect, the fetal skull has two transverse diameters and the rest are considered to be anteroposterior diameters, okay? Anteroposterior meaning they are running from behind, from uh, front to back. So let's start with um, um, the two transverse diameters. The first one is called the biparietal diameter, which measures 9.5 centimeters. This is measured between the parietal eminences, the raised points on the parietal bones, and this is the greatest transverse diameter. Another transverse diameter is called the bitemporal diameter, which measures 8.2 centimeter. It is measured on the thesis point on the coronal suture on either sides of the fetal skull. Then apart from this, we have the anteroposterior diameters, which are running from the front to the back of uh, the fetal skull. The first one is the sub-occipital pragmatic, sub-occipital pragmatic, meaning it has three areas that have been considered and this measures um, approximately 9.5 centimeters. It is measured from the middle of the bregma to the under surface of the occipital bone at the neck. It is the presenting diameter in a case when the head is well flexed in labor. So the sub occipital pragmatic measuring 9.5 centimeters becomes so important. Apart from this, we also have the sub occipital frontal which measures 10 centimeters. This is measured from the orbital ridges to the under surface of the occipital bone at the neck. Okay, now this sub occipital frontal, it's um, the presenting diameter when the head is uh, partially flexed, so critical to understand. The other diameter that we should also look at include the occipital frontal diameter, which is 11.5 centimeters. 
We also have the mental vertical, which is 13 centimeters, the sub um, mental pragmatic, which is 9.5 centimeters, and the sub uh, mental vertical, which is 11.5 centimeters. So these play a critical understanding in relation to the presentation of uh, the fetus whilst uh, labor has commenced. So critical for our understanding, very important. Let me go through once. The uh, occipital frontal, which measures 11.5 centimeters. This is the diameter that is presented in a deflexed head. Okay, then the mental vertical, which measures 13, point, uh, 13 centimeters, it's uh, the presenting diameter in a case when we have brow presentation, and it is the largest diameter of the fetal head, the mental vertical. The submental pragmatic, this one, is um, usually seen when um, uh, the face is uh, the presenting part. Then the sub uh, uh, the submental vertical, which is 11.5 centimeters. This, of course, it is um, a diameter that can also be considered. So these are the diameters that have just been discussed, which are very critical to understand. Modding of the fetal skull, this is another aspect that we need to consider. Now, molding, this is just the overriding of a bone over the other one, okay? And it occurs with descent of the fetal head into the pelvis to reduce the head circumference. If molding does not occur, then uh, pelvic disproportion may just be the result. So molding is occurring to ensure that the head circumference reduces. Then um, the frontal bones slip under the parietal bones. That's the intention of this modding. Then the parietal bones override over each other. The parietal bones slip under the occipital bone. So this is what is being uh, shown dramatically. Okay, so the frontal bones and the frontal bones we understand these are the bones that are found on the front of the feet of the, of the skull. So the frontal bones will slip under the parietal bones. The parietal bones are the bones that are found on the sides. Then apart from that one, the parietal bones override each other, meaning it could be either the left or the right going underneath the other one. Then the parietal bones will slip under the occipital bone. So in that order, we'll have a reduction in the circumference of uh, the fetal skull. In conclusion, the skull bones encase and protect the brain. This is so important to understand. Then apart from that one, it's also critical to note that um, the skull bones being protective, they will ensure that the structures that are being covered are not damaged during the processes of labor. Correct presentation of the smallest diameter of the fetal skull to the largest diameter of the mother's bony pelvis is very essential because this will result in labor that can proceed without any difficulties. And therefore, in conclusion, it's important that we take note of the nitty gritties of this presentation on the fetal skull. I urge each one of you to ensure that you take time to go through one more, and if possible, subscribe, share this video.